हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू दीक्षा कर्नाटका यूट्यूब चैनल टुडे इज संडे एंड आई एम बैक विद द केपीएल क्वेश्चन पेपर टेन सो मैच नंबर टेन इज ऑलरेडी ओवर आई एम नॉट श्योर इफ यू हैव प्लेड दिस मैच और नॉट बट इफ यू हैव प्लेड इट प्लीज वेट फॉर द रिजल्ट एंड एज यू नो दिस वीक्स के वाज बेस्ड ऑन थ्री चैप्टर्स एज यूजल सो फर्स्ट वी हैड द चैप्टर्स फ्रॉम मोशन इन अ प्लेन then laws of motion uh, then we had a one second few chapter review that is uh, electrostatic potential right and if you have not yet uh, downloaded the question paper you can visit our whatsapp channel the question papers are still available there you can uh, go to the channel by uh, clicking on the link given in the description so once you download the question paper um, open it try to solve it and then you can check the answers that i am going to discuss today okay so let's start with the chapter question paper first question is the uh, equation of motion of a body projected at an angle are given by x equals to 3t and y is equal to 4t minus 4gt square uh, the velocity of projection of the body is okay so the velocity of the projection of the body you have to calculate now how can you calculate x and y coordinates are given in terms of uh, time t something strange right so what you have to remember at that when the particle was projected initially you are uh, trying to find this velocity okay say u so at that point of time time was equals to zero okay and if you somehow able to calculate the x component and the y component when the time t equals to 0 then you can calculate the uh, uh, velocity u projection velocity by using the formula ux square plus uy square right you remember that right so be because they are perpendicular to each other you can find the resultant of that so similarly what we will do we will start with x equals to uh, 3t and then we will try to find ux what is ux ux is nothing but dx by dt right so dx by dt now uh, what is dx by dt 3t is there so it will be only simple 3 and no matter what is the time ux will remain constant so at t equals to 0 also it will be 3 so it is not changing with time now what about y y is given by 4t minus 4 gt square okay so this is the equation for y again we will calculate ui by differentiating it with respect to time so you can see this will be 4 minus 4 g times 2 t right so uh, now at time t equals to 0 what will be the speed that is our uh, thing to consider so ui will be at t equals to 0 so this t will be 0 so entire term will become 0 so only will be left we will only be left with u uh, y equals to 4 so what will will be the uh, resultant initial projection velocity initial projection velocity u will be equals to ux square plus ui square right so ux square plus u y square now you can see that this will nothing but 4 square plus 3 square whole root so what is 3 square plus 4 square whole root we know this is very old uh, calculation in the mathematics that this will be 5 right if you want you can calculate 4 square 16 3 square 9 add them 25 then do the square root it will be 5 okay but if you remember 3 square plus 4 square uh, square root is 5 then it will be just one line problem now <coughs> the maximum height attained by a projectile thrown at an angle theta with the horizontal is found to be half the horizontal range then what is the value of theta so you have again a projectile based question you have thrown a projectile why so many projectile based question if you ask because there is high probability that one of the problems will be based on projectile okay most commonly asked questions from this chapter are from projectile now what is the question the maximum height attained by the projectile so maximum height attained by the projectile is h and the range is r okay i hope you remember the equations i will try to help you to remember them again okay 
height attained by the projectile thrown at an angle theta with the horizontal is found to be half the horizontal range. So, uh, h is equals to maximum height is half of the horizontal range and, the, and then you have to calculate theta. Now, what is h? If you remember, let me write it here only. h is equals to uh, u square okay, sin square theta u or v whatever you are comfortable with. I generally write initial velocity that is why I prefer this term as u. Okay, If you are using the formula v that is also fine u square sin square theta by 2 g and uh, range is given by u square sin 2 theta by g. Okay, If there is a 2 in the numerator, there will not be any 2 in the denominator. Okay, uh, If there is a square in the numerator, then there will be a uh, 2 in the denominator as well. Okay, Just to remember the values. Okay, Some student confuse when there will be a 2, when there will not be any 2. Okay, Now, so here the relationship given, given is h is equal to half r. So, let us put that value. So, u square sin square theta by 2 g equals to half of half of u square sin 2 theta by g. Okay. Now, let us see which of the uh, things are getting cancelled. So, u square u square cancel, these two, these two cancels, g, g cancels. So, what we are left with? We are left with sin square theta equals to sin 2 theta okay? or sin square theta equals to 2 sin theta cos theta, right? Sin 2 theta is sin 2 sin theta cos theta. Now, sin square theta means sin theta into sin theta. So, we can cancel one of the sin theta. So, we get sin theta equals to 2 cos theta, right? Or we can write tan theta equals to 2, right? Tan theta sin by cos equals to tan. So, that will be equals to 2. So, theta equals to tan inverse 2, right? So, theta equals to tan inverse 2 is the correct answer. Right? If you have solved these questions properly, you will definitely be able to solve this question. Now, for a given velocity, a projectile can have the same range r for two angles of projections. Okay? If T1 and T2 be the time of flight in the two cases, then the product of the two times of flight is proportional to. So, first, let us understand the case. Okay? So, for two different angles of projection for initial same initial velocity, a projectile can have same range. Okay? Now, if first angle of projection say alpha and the second angle of projection say beta, then I told you that alpha plus beta equals to 90 degree. They has to be complementary angle. If you have followed my class, then you should know or if you have studied this in before in your P1 that two projectiles can have same range for the same projection velocity when the, uh, the angle of projections are complementary to each other. That is the, uh, uh, if you add them together, you will get 90 degrees, right? Now, uh, let us understand what is the value of T1. T1 is 2u sin theta. I am again using u. I will going to be using u in throughout my uh, uh, solution series. In my lecture series, I used v naught. Okay, instead of using v naught, I am using u in my uh, solution series. Okay. So, 2u sin theta by g, that is the time, right? For first angle, for first angle, say alpha, angle alpha, it is sin alpha. Okay. And T2 will be equals to 2u sin beta by g. So, time T1 is for this one, time T2 is for this one, right? So, two different times are being taken by the, the, them. Now, let me find sin beta. What is sin beta? Sin beta is sin 90 degrees minus alpha, right? From this equation, okay, beta will be 90 degrees minus alpha or what is 90 degree minus alpha? It will be cos alpha, right? I hope you remember the uh, law of complementary angles, right? So, sin beta will be equals to cos alpha. So, here we will simply write 2u cos 
cos alpha divided by g ok without any confusion we simply write a cos alpha by g now product of these two times we are supposed to find ok so what is the product of these two values let us multiply them uh, 2 to the 4 ok then u u u square ok and then uh, sin alpha cos alpha right sin alpha cos alpha divided by g g g square ok. So, now what we will do we will keep this to one of the two outside then we will write u square ok I will take g square also one of them with me what is the value 2 sin alpha cos alpha and divided by g ok. So, I have done this special case why I have done this you will see in a while. So, 2 by g u square 2 sin alpha cos alpha is sin 2 alpha divided by g. Now, what is this? So, if you are following me uh, in my, our previous problem then you should know this is nothing but range right. So, this is nothing but 2 by g times r. Now, g is a constant 2 is constant. So, t 1 t 2 must be proportional to uh, range r right. So, correct answer is option d in this case check your answer if you have made any mistakes ok. So, this will be simple question ok even though the mathematical little longer, but if you know this principle this is very easy if you just multiply them you will get the answer ok without any uh, problem. Now, <coughs> question number 4 a stone tied to the end of a 20 centimeter long string is whirled in a horizontal circle if the centripetal acceleration is 9.8 meter per second square its angular speed in radian per second. So, you have a circle ok and you are rotating it like this whirling ok. Now, they said that the radius is 20 centimeter ok. So, radius is 20 centimeter or 0 0.2 meter. Okay, we, uh, we have to convert it into meters. Now, they said the centripetal acceleration is given by 9.8 meter per second square ok and they ask you to find the angular speed. So, we know that uh, centripetal acceleration can be written in two ways one is v square by r or uh, as we know v is equal to r omega. So, if you put that then you will get omega square r ok. Here we are trying to find this angular speed omega. So, this is equals to 9.8 that is given. So, we are trying to find omega. So, omega square is equals to 9.8 divided by 0.2 r is equals to 0.2 right. So, this decimal this decimal goes away 2 49 is a 98. So, omega will be equals to 7 radian per second ok. So, 7 radian per second is the correct answer ok. This is a very simple question only use the formula directly you will get the answer right. Now, the height y and the distance x along the horizontal plane of projectile on a certain planet ok not earth a certain planet with no surrounding atmosphere are given by y is equal to 8 t minus 5 t square and x equals to 60 meter where t is in seconds the velocity with which the projectile is projected. Similar question we have solved a similar question uh, before also. So, u y let me calculate u y because u y is given first. So, here 8 t minus 5 t square. So, basically u y is d y by d t ok d y by d t means 8 minus 10 t 8 minus 10 t and what we have to do? we have to find the velocity when time t equals to 0 right. So, it will be nothing but 8 t is uh, 0 if you put 0 then it will be 0. Now, similarly you have to calculate u x, u x only depends on 60. So, u x is d x by d t equals to 6 ok. So, you can see that 
uh, ux is constant so no matter what you calculate it will be always constant now you have to calculate the uh, initial projection velocity that is ux square plus ui square and if you are wondering why i am using this formula you have to go back to few problems where i have solved this similar question with a different value only the thing is the language is slightly different otherwise the problem is same so 8 squared is 64 6 squared is 36 so it's square root of 100 that is 10 meter per second right so 10 meter per second is the correct answer for this question now let's move on a projectile is projected at 10 meter per second by making an angle 60 degree to the horizontal so let's draw the diagram a projectile is projected at an angle 60 degrees okay initial speed is 10 meter per second okay after some time the velocity makes an angle 30 degree to the horizontal okay its speed at this instant is so after some time okay so this is the projectile motion okay after some time if you see its angle of projection is going like this so sometime after some time it says that the angle of projection is now 30 degrees okay and they have asked you to find the speed at this point of the projectile now how can we solve uh, this problem okay so uh, we know that at this point when the angle is making 30 degrees suppose the initial angle of uh, velocity is u okay then what is this component this component is u x right and this component is u y okay what is u x u x is u cos 60 degree y this is the adjacent component and this is the uh, vertical component so u y is equal to u sin 60 now let us put the values one by one what is u u is given 10 cos 60 is root 3 by 2 so it is nothing but 5 root 3 okay and what is u y 10 along this direction and then u cos sin 60 is half so it will be 5 okay so u x and u y are now calculated now what we have to do we have to find where these two are making an angle 30 degrees at this point suppose the velocity is v okay suppose the velocity is v now you should remember that during projectile motion its x component of the velocity does not change only thing that changes is the y component of the velocity because only gravitational force acting only downward direction right so it will try to reduce the uh, velocity in this direction but uh, uh, there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction so there will be no speed change in the horizontal direction so you can say that there will be no change in the value of ux ux will remain constant whatever angle it will make okay now at this point whatever the final velocity is v so what is the component of this v this will be v uh, cos 30 now incidentally this v cos 30 is constant uh, because this is exactly equals to 5 root 3 so this is the problem v cos 30 is equals to ux is equals to 5 root 3 okay and they have asked you to find the velocity at this instant so you are trying to find v here okay so what is cos 30 cos 30 is nothing but half equals to 5 root 3 okay, right so v equals to 10 root 3 okay so this is the answer for this question 10 root 3 simple question okay even though uh, it looks like little difficult okay what will i will do if, to solve this question right only thing that you have to remember that x component does not change okay you can find the y component and you can find time etc then it will be a complicated problem actually it is not so complicated problem this is a simple question okay only thing that you have to remember is that the x component of the velocity is remain constant no matter where it is even if the particle is in this side the x component will always remain constant each and every point the x component of the velocity will remain constant it will not change that is the beauty of uh, projectile motion now 
question number 7 the angles of projection of a projectile at an angle 45 degree minus theta and 45 degree plus theta the horizontal range described by the projectile are in the ratio so this is a trick question one line question so first angle alpha suppose this is angle alpha equals to 45 degree minus theta and second angle say beta 45 degrees plus theta now if you add them what will be the angle theta theta cancels 90 degrees so alpha and beta are complementary angles if they are complementary angles then what is the range if two angles of projections are complementary then their range will be definitely equal so r1 will be equals to r2 that is the ratio of them will be 1 is to 1 okay this is a very simple question uh, one line question but you have to know this uh, theory part right now question number 8 a particle is projected with a velocity v so that its horizontal range is twice the greatest height attained okay so in this case what is the problem so we have done where the height was half the range right here the height is twice the range okay so uh, the range is twice the height right the horizontal range is so they have asked you to find the horizontal range in this case so you are trying to find r in this case so how to do that so we know that first of all let me write the uh, given condition okay the range is twice the greatest height attained okay so what is the formula for range range is u square sin 2 theta divided by g okay equals to twice the height what is height height is u square sin square theta by 2 g this formula this formula uh, height range time of flight etc you have to remember them okay they are like uh, they should be in your fingertips and if you are preparing for je or neat then you have to remember these equations okay these are very very basic uh, equations for uh, the other exam g g cancels u square u square cancels so you get sin 2 theta equals to sin square theta so this i will going to be using in a later stage so i am marking this as equation 1 okay now what we will do we will break this sin 2 theta so 2 sin theta cos theta equals to sin theta times sin theta right sin square theta is any number square is that number times that number right so sin square theta is sin theta times sin theta so one of the sin theta cancels so we get 2 cos theta equals to sin theta right or if you take this on the other side you get tan theta equals to 2 right now what you have to do you have to find sin theta from this so what is sin theta if you know tan theta if you know suppose tan theta is equal to a by b then sin theta can be written as if you remember that value a divided by square root of a square plus b square right i hope you remember this cos theta can be written as b divided by a square plus b square right so here what is there uh, 2 divided by 1 i can write uh, 2 as 2 by 1 right so i can do this so sin theta is equal to 2 divided by 2 square that is 4 plus 1 so it will be 2 by root 5 now sin theta we have calculated we are trying to find the range so formula for range is uh, u square sin 2 theta by g okay so u square and g are already there okay u square instead of u square you have to put v there b is given okay so in this case instead of u square let me use the given value that is v okay so if you see all the options v square and g are already present but you have to eliminate this term sin 2 theta how can you do the elimination you use the equation number 1 in equation number 1 you know that sin 2 theta equals to sin square theta so sin 2 theta is sin square theta now sin theta we have already calculated 2 by root 5 so sin 2 theta will be whole square of that so it will be 4 by 5 right 
So, this is why I, I have written this equation number 1, ok, little trick. So, now put this value here, you will get 4 V square by 5 G, ok, 5 G mobile tower, 4 V square by 5 G, 4 was old, 5 G is new, 4 V square by 5 G. So, this is the correct answer. Okay, interesting question, you should remember this process, this is a particular uh, process that you have to remember to solve such questions. You can, you can find cos theta as well, then you can multiply them to find uh, exact value of sin 2 theta, then you can calculate, that is also fine, but this is the easier way, okay, this is the easiest shortcut way to solve this question. Now, three projectiles A and B, A, B and C are projected at an angle of 30 degrees. 45 degrees and 60 degrees respectively. If R A, R B and R C are ranges of A, B and C uh, are respectively, then velocity of the projection is same for both cases. Now, we know that where is the range maximum? Range is maximum when, range is maximum when the angle of projection is equals to 45 degree, right? So, R B will be the maximum possible value. So, R B will be greater than all other uh, R A and uh, R C, right? So, R B should be greater than the other values for because it is the angle of projection is 45 degree. Now, if you see R A is 30 degrees and R B is, uh, R C is 60 degrees. So, what else you can say? You can say that for angle of projection A and C, okay, they are giving you 90 degrees, right? So, their respective ranges will be equal. So, R A should be equals to R C and both of them should be less than that is that of R B. Now, check the options. So, R A and R B are equal and R A and R C are equal and they should be less than that of R B. R B is maximum. So, correct answer is option number C. Okay? Now, question number 10. The relation between the time of flight of a projectile is T F. Okay, and the maximum time to reach the maximum height is Tm. Then what is the relationship between Tf and Tm? This is a very fundamental easy question. We know that Tm is basically uh, Tm times 2 is equals to total time of flight. If you remember, while calculating the total time of flight, uh, you have used this formula that time of flight is nothing but twice the time to reach to the maximum position, right? So, this is the correct answer, correct option. Okay? Easy question, only thing that you have to know, you have to have some basic knowledge. Now, a boy of 50 kg is standing in a lift. Now, we are slowly uh, going towards the laws of motion chapter, right? A boy of 50 kg is standing in a lift moving down with an acceleration of 9.8 meter per second square. The apparent weight of the boy is. So, basically, boy is standing inside the lift and the lift is going down with 9.8 meter per second. So, what is the gravitational acceleration? Gravitational acceleration is also 9.8 and you can say basically the lift is in a state of free fall, right? If anything accelerates downward with 9.8 meter per second, then it is called, uh, we call it a state of free fall. And in the state of free fall, the weight is 0, apparent weight is 0. So, apparent will be, weight will be 0. I discussed this while doing the class, if you remember. When, this is a very interesting question, this question, okay. When a U-238 nucleus originally at rest decays by emitting an alpha particle, what is alpha particle? Alpha particle is helium-4 ion, okay, having speed U, the recoil speed of the residual nucleus. So, this is basically a uh, mixed concept question. Some part is taken from nuclei chapter, some part is taken from the uh, collision chapter, cons uh, conservation of momentum chapter part, right? So, we know that momentum is always conserved. So, if the momentum is conserved, then what we have to do? We know that what is the final initial momentum? Initial momentum of the system mv is 0, right? Now, finally, total momentum on whatever we can write on our left hand side, right hand side should be 0. Right? Now, what is the momentum of the helium ion? Helium ion's momentum will be 4 mass, this is mass number, right? This is mass number. So, mass times its speed, right, 4 u. And suppose the speed of uh, U238, uh, now U238 after the decay, it will lose its 
mass, right? Because nuclear decay mass is lost. So, what will be the new mass? New mass will be 234, right? So, the new mass of the U238 will be 234. So, plus 234V should be equals to 0. That is the thing that when we add two momentums, they should give you the value 0, right? Now, <coughs> so from here we can write 4u vector is equal to 234v vector, right? There will be negative sign, sorry, my mistake, minus 234v or v vector equals to minus 4u vector divided by 234. So, minus 4u vector divided by 234 will be the recoil speed of the residual nucleus. Okay, clear? Not so difficult question, only thing you have to know the knowledge of what is this uh, number represent, this represents mass number, okay, and then you have to know that uh, the residual nucleus will be less in mass because it is already emitted a helium uh, ion, right? Now, question number 13, two blocks M1 equals to 5G and M2 equals to 10G are hung vertically over a light frictionless pulley as shown in the figure. What is the acceleration of the masses when left free? So, what is the question? You have two masses, okay? one mass is M2 that is 10 kg right? and M1 that is 5 kg. They are hang like this. Now, initially it was uh, held by some system and as soon as you remove the system, it will start accelerating. Now, this is being heavier, it will accelerate downward, this is being lighter, it will accelerate upwards. Okay? So, what you have to do? You have to find that acceleration. Now, since they are attached to a single screen, acceleration of both the particle, both the masses will be same. So, assume that this is accelerating downward with an acceleration A, then it will accelerate upward with an acceleration A. Okay? So, what else we can say because they are attached to a single string, the tension of this will be T, the same tension will be here as well because of the uh, 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 third law of motion. Now, same tension will be uh, coming over here as well as T and then the there will be tension here as well T. Okay? This is the uh, diagram. Now, here it will be M1 G, this will be M2 G. Okay? This is the free body diagrams for both of them individually. You can consider this to be the free body diagram of this and this as the free body diagram of this. So, two objects you can draw free body diagram individually or you can draw arrows in the one figure only and then you can consider them individually. Now, for mass M2, let us start with mass M2. Okay. What is the direction of acceleration? Direction of acceleration is downward. So, what I said, if you remember acceleration, direction of acceleration, the uh, component of force which is in the direction of acceleration, he is rich or Amir. So, here M 2 G is Amir and tension is acting opposite direction. So, that is Garib. So, we have to do Amir minus Garib. If you remember this, it will be very, very helpful for you to solve any kind of uh, mechanics problem. Okay? Amir minus Garib equals to mass times acceleration, right? This is the first mass. Now, for mass m1, for mass m1, now see the acceleration is in the upward direction, that is in the direction of tension T, right? So, here T is Amir and the downward force m1g is poor, that is Garib. So, m1g, that should be equals to mass times acceleration, right? Now, what do you have to do? If you see equation 1 and equation 2, m1, m2, uh, g, those are known. Only thing that is not known is this tension. So, how can we remove the tension from our life? We do not want tension. Tension is very uh, hectic. So, if we add 1 and 2, if we add 1 and 2, the tension will be gone, will be tension fresh, tension free. So, m2, g, minus m1 g. Okay? This t was minus, this t was plus. So, they will cancel each other. 
equals to m2 a plus m1 a right now put the values 10 g minus 5 g equals to 10 a plus 5 a right or 5 g equals to 15 a so this is the generation of 5 g so 5 g is coming again and again so a will be equals to 5 g divided by 15 so g by 3 right so the answer is g by 3 the pulley system is old so that's why it is going to g by 3 but while solving the problem we got 5g right your network now question number 14 a block is kept on a frictionless inclined surface okay with an angle of inclination alpha frictionless inclined surface angle of inclination alpha okay the incline is given an acceleration a so incline is given an acceleration a okay to keep the block stationary then a is equal to now the block is kept like this so block will try to there will be two force mg suppose this is mg okay this will be mg cos theta and there will be a force here mg sin theta okay now to keep the block stationary okay what we have to do we have to have this acceleration the force due to this acceleration acting on this mass should balance the uh, downward force okay Th this this force that is acting uh, vertically uh, to the plane will be balanced by the normal force so this will be balanced so, there is no problem about that but who will balance this mg sin theta force to balance this mg sin theta force we have to consider the acceleration of the block so if the entire inclined plane is accelerating then obviously this block will also accelerate so this block will also accelerate to the acceleration a or you can say the force acting on this block will be equals to force equals to ma okay then we can calculate a component of this along this direction now if this is uh, angle alpha then this angle will be also angle alpha okay so remember this this is alpha this is alpha okay so this will be alpha then this will also be alpha so what will be this component this will be ma cos alpha adjacent component right adjacent component will be always cos now so this mg sin theta has to be balanced by this ma cos alpha so ma cos alpha must be equals to mg sin alpha so m m cancels so from here you can get a is equal to g tan alpha okay very basic question of mechanics so it will be g tan alpha right now question number 15 which of the following sets of concurrent forces may be in equilibrium f1 equals to 3 newton f2 is equal to 5 newton f3 is equal to 1 newton now okay there are few values given for f1 and f2 both are 3 newton and 5 newton only f3 is changing 1 9 6 15 now if three forces are creating an equilibrium so what is the possibility so first of all if they are linear so if they are linear means they can be parallel or anti parallel in that case if you add any two of them that should be equals to the third one right so for example if this is suppose 5 this is say 3 then another opposite vector is 8 then this they will create an equilibrium right if they are parallel so but you can see that none of the option is equals to 8 so that means that is not what they are looking for so what else when I can create an equilibrium even if they are not linear if they are not linear then they has to form a triangle they has to form a triangle any form of triangle so they has to form a triangle so that uh, addition of any two will give you the uh, opposite of the other vector so that it will balance right that is the if they are cyclic vectors then they will create a balance now when what is the condition of creating a triangle suppose length of this side is a length of this side is b and length of this side is c when will they be forming a triangle 
they will form a triangle only if, if you take any two sides, if you take any two sides and add them and that addition is greater than the third value, always, any two, okay, A plus C should be greater than B, A, uh, B plus C should be greater than A. So, if this condition is satisfied, you uh, studied that in your lower grades, right, that sum of any two sides of a triangle should be greater than that of the third uh, uh, side, right? And they used to give you the problem, which of them following can be used to form a triangle, okay? Then you have to eliminate, okay, this is not possible, this is not possible. Same problem is here. So, this is not a vector problem, this is a triangle problem, okay? Now, you have to see if you add any two of the values and whether it is greater than the third one or not. So, for example, one, uh, uh, check option one. 3 plus 5 is 8, it is greater than 1. 3 plus 1 is 4, which is less than 5. So, it will not be possible to form a triangle. This will not, this is not a solution. Okay, similarly, check the option B. 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 is less than 9. So, definitely it will not form a triangle. Now, let us check option C. 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 is greater than 6, 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 is greater than 5, okay, 5 plus 6 is 11, 11 is greater than 3, so this is possible, this is a possible candidate. Now, let us check the option D, 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 is less than 15, so this is also not possible, so correct answer is option C. So, you need to check using the values which one you can use to form a successful triangle, only then you can say that, okay, because they can be arranged in a tri triangular shape, so they can create an equilibrium. It is not necessary they will create equilibrium, but they can create equilibrium if we choose the direction of vectors accordingly, okay. So, for example, if you take this uh, kind of uh, structure, then uh, some of these two will be this direction, so they will cancel each other and you can take and uh, you will get an equilibrium. Okay, only if they are forming a triangle, then only there will be an equilibrium. Otherwise, there will be no equilibrium. This is a very interesting question. Now, question number 16. The reaction of the floor on the object placed on the floor of an elevator is maximum when the elevator is. So, basically you are uh, standing in front of an elevator and they asked you when the reaction of the floor will be maximum. Okay, so reaction of the floor will be maximum when it is accelerating upwards. I told you during the class lift motion, right? So, accelerating upward, when the lift is accelerating upward, then only the uh, reaction force uh, by the floor on the object will be maximum, okay? Now, a mass of 6 kg is suspended by a rope of length 2 meter from a ceiling, okay? Let me read this problem first. A force of 50 Newton in the horizontal direction is applied at the midpoint of the rope. The angle made by the rope with the vertical in equilibrium is, okay. There is a spelling mistake, okay. So, it will be Q, not G. Equilibrium is, so first of all the rope was hanged, then you applied a force, now the rope is hanging like this. So, this is the 50 Newton force that you have applied, okay. This is the mass of the object, okay, 6 kg. I already solved this question twice, once uh, while doing the class and once during doing the previous, previous year questions, okay. But if you still miss this question, uh, these two those two classes, then I will explain it again. So, here you consider this point, okay. At this point, you are trying to find what is the angle made by this with the vertical, right? So, this is the vertical that uh, the rope makes with the angle vertical, okay? So, you can say this angle equals to this angle. So, you can uh, check any one of the angle that is fine. Now, if this angle is alpha and this tension is T, okay, then there will be two components of this tension T. One will be along this direction and one will be along this direction, okay. This will be T cos alpha and this will be T sin alpha, right. Now, 
this T cos alpha will balance the weight of this hanging mass and this T sin alpha will balance the 50 Newton force, right. So, let apply the value T sin alpha is equals to 50, okay and T cos alpha equals to 6 times G, mg, right, 6 times 10 meter per second, okay. So, this is the weight. So, now if you divide these two, then you will get tan alpha equals to 50 divided by 60, that is 5 by 6, okay. And the answer will be close to 40 degrees. This will be, if you take from here, if you find alpha, alpha is equal to tan inverse 5 by 6, it will be. So, if you see, this is very close to 1. Okay, this 5 by 6 is very close to 1. So, the angle will be close to 45 degrees. Okay, uh, so this is one way to guess the answer. So, 5 by 6 is very close to uh, 45, uh, very close to 1. So, the answer will be very close to 45 degree, but less than 45. Why less than 45? Because the number is less than 1. Okay, so if it is, suppose it is 7 by 6, then it will be close to 45 degree, but it will be more than 45 degree. So, in that case, you could have taken 50 degrees as answer, right. This is one way to guess, but actual value of this will be 39.8, which is very close to 40 degrees, okay. Now, let us move on to the next question. Two masses of 5 kg and 3 kg are uh, suspended with the help of massless inextensible string as shown in the figure. When the whole system is going upwards with the acceleration 2 meter per second square, the value of T1 is use g equals to 9.8 meter per second, okay. So, we will not use g t equal to uh, equal to 9.8, we will use g is equal to 10 and then we will see which one is the closest answer. That is how we will solve it. So, here T2 is in this direction, T1 is in this direction. So, the mass acting here is m g m 1 g, okay, and the mass acting here is m 2 g, right. Now, what we have to do? We have to uh, first, uh, whole system is going upward. So, whole system is moving upward, right, with an acceleration say a, a is equals to uh, 2 meter per second square. Now, let us first start with this combination, okay, this combination first T 1, okay. In this case, what are all the forces acting on this object? T1 acting upward, Mg acting downward. Now, this T2 will have a reactionary force here. So, T2 will be here as well, right. This is the main trick. If you miss this trick, then you will be gone, right. So, for mass M1, for M1, okay, uh, a T1 is upward and acceleration is also upward. So, who is Amir? T1 is Amir, um, acceleration is the direction of Amir force. So, T1 is the rich one. So, T1 minus, okay, whatever forces are acting downward, T2, okay, then Mg, that should be equals to M2A, right. So, this is the first thing that you have noticed. Now, what else? Uh, put the values, okay, T1 minus T2 equals to M2 uh, A plus G. Why A plus G? There was a negative sign over here. So, you have taken this negative sign, it will become negative. If you take it on the other side, it will become positive, okay. So, I am doing slightly fastened weight. So, M2 is 5, A is 2 meter per second and G is, I am assuming 10. So, 12, 5 12 is 60. So, T 1 minus T 2 is 60. Now, let us apply uh, the same thing free body diagram concept for mass M 2. What is M 2? In this case, force acting upwards is T 2. So, T 2 is Amir in this case and only T 2 is acting upwards, right and M G is acting downward. So, T 2 minus M 2 G uh, 
I made one small mistake that I said this is m1 and this is m2, but while solving the question I used this m2 and now I am using this as m1. Okay. So, this is the small mistake I apologize for that. So, this will be m1 g and this will be equals to m1 a. Okay. This is the basic structure of writing any free body diagram uh, force problem. Right. So, T2 will be equals to m1 a plus m1 g. Again similar thing m1 is common a plus g. Okay. What is m1? m1 is 3 kg and a is 2, g is 10. So, it will be 3 12s are 36. So, T 2 we have calculated 36. From this equation we can write T 1 minus 36 equals to 60 or T 1 equals to 36 plus 60 equals to 96. Now, remember that while solving this question we assumed g to be 10. right? So, our answer should be uh, slightly more than actual answer. So, what is the actual answer? Obviously, there is no uh, second guessing only one option is close to this value. So, basically it is the correct answer, okay. but in case they give one value which is greater than say suppose there is an option 100. So, you cannot choose 100 because if you take 100 then mean you are taking higher than whatever value you have got. So, you have to be careful. Now, question number 19. A coin placed on a rotating turn table just slips if it is placed at a distance of 4 centimeter from the center. So, rotating turn table is there and it slips when it is at a distance 4 centimeter from the center. Okay, it slips means at this point uh, the centripetal force required to keep the coin at place is exactly equals to the based on the uh, rotating rotation speed of rotation right so uh, angular velocity of the turn suppose at this case is omega okay so we know that m r omega square is equals to the uh, centripetal force right and at this point it says that it will be slipping. So, that means at this point whatever the force of friction acting on this that should be balancing it. right? Now, this is the balanced condition for first case. In the second case what you have done you have double the speed of rotation. So, what will be the velo uh, angular velocity is double then what is the distance. Okay, in this case initial distance was 4 centimeter. right? So, m times 4 times omega square equals to the force of friction. Now, if you increase the speed, okay, now you have to decrease the distance so that it still remains at the same place. But what will remain constant? The force of friction only depends between the nature of the surfaces, right? It does not depend on uh, speed or anything else. So, if it is, uh, um, uh, even if you increase the speed, the force of friction acting on it will still remain the same. So, from there, for the next case, we can write m, now the speed is uh, angular speed is now doubled, right? So, it will be 2 omega square r uh, say r dash equals to f. f will remain same, right? So, now what we have to do? We have to compare f from equation 1 and equation 2, okay? So, we can write that m 4 m times 4 omega square r dash equals to m times 4, this 4 was uh, the radius 4 centimeter, right? m times 4 times omega square. So, m m cancels, omega square, omega square cancels, this 4, this 4 cancels. So, r dash equals to 1. Okay? So, the radius uh, of uh, curvature, radius of the distance of the uh, from the center should be 1 centimeter, right? Easy question, but slightly tricky. Now, Question number 20, a body of mass 10 kg is kept on a horizontal surface. Okay, the coefficient of kinetic friction between the body and the surface is 0.5. A horizontal force of 60 Newton is applied on the body. The resulting acceleration of the body is about. So, first of all you have to assume the body is moving because 60 Newton force is acting on the body and kinetic friction is given. 
kinetic friction what is the value of kinetic friction kinetic friction if you keep a body on a table okay the kinetic friction is always constant and kinetic friction acts only when the object is moving so 60 newton you applied in this direction okay there is a force mg acting on this and the normal force is equals to mg okay and force of friction is kinetic friction is mu k times normal force right so what is normal uh, force of kinetic friction is here kinetic friction is mu k mg or mu k is 0 0.5 m is given 6 kg and g is 10 right oh sorry uh, m is given 10 kg my mistake so it is 10 kg and g is 10 so it will be 0 0.5 times 100 that is equals to 50 newton so 50 newton is the force which is uh, pushing it backwards and 60 newton force is pushing it upward so what is the net force net force should be equals to 60 minus 50 that is 10 newton now our future uh, newton father to taught us net force is equals to ma father equals to ma or 10 equals to 10 kg times a so a equals to 1 meter per second square so it will be 1 meter per second square follow the steps one by one you will achieve your answer okay next question a stone of mass 0 0.05 0 0.05 kg is thrown vertically upwards what is the direction and magnitude of the net force on the stone during this upward motion so you throw a stone upward okay we, uh, of some mass okay so what is the magnitude and direction of net force on the stone during this upward motion so they asked you what is the uh, um, force when it is moving up upward so first of all force will always act downward force will always act downward and does not matter how much uh, with whatever speed it is moving upward only thing that acts on this object is its weight okay only its weight and that weight is the force acting on it and that is pulling it back only gravitational force is acting no other force is acting as long as we ignore air resistance right so what is the force here mass is 0 0.05 kg and we know g is uh, 10 so only 0 0.5 newton force acting and that is acting downward so 0 0.5 force acting downwards so almost 0.49 because in, if you instead of using 9 uh, yeah, sorry using 10 if you use 9.8 then you would have got 0.49 right so this is the answer now let's check the question number 22 okay interesting question in this diagram the potential difference between a and b is 60 volts the potential difference across 6 microfarad capacitor is so they have asked you what is the potential difference across this 6 microfarad capacitor okay so to solve this this is a little longer question uh, from this chapter some questions are uh, coming little longer but you have to solve those questions ma mathematically not super challenging only you have to know the formulas so these two capacitors are connected in parallel so if the capacitors are connected in parallel then we can simply write the equivalent capacitance as 1 2 this is the equivalent capacitor so that will be i am drawing only one capacitor for that this is b okay so this is 6 this is 3 now what will be this so they are in parallel in case of parallel we know that the capacitance gets added so 3 plus 3 will be 6 right and this is another in series so these are the capacitors which are connected now they are all connected in series right so suppose the charge in the circuit is q okay uh, and if you can replace this with a single capacitor okay between a and b then also the same amount of charge will flow so first of all we have to calculate the equivalent capacitance in this case what is the equivalent capacitance they are in series so we will use this right 1 by c q equals to 1 by 6 here more than two capacitors are there so you have to use the old fashioned formula 1 by 3 plus 1 by 6 
plus 1 by 3. Okay. Now, the LCM is 6. So, here 1, 3 to the 6, 1, 3 to the 6. So, you will get 1 plus 2 plus 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 by 6. So, it is equal to 1. So, C equivalent is equal to 1 microfarad. So, we have calculated the C equivalent. Now, what is the resist uh, potential across C equivalent? Potential across C equivalent is 60 volt. So, we know that Q equals to C equivalent times V. Okay, and this Q will be same for uh, normal case as well because they are connected in series. C equivalent is 1 microfarad, 1 microfarad, uh, keep it as microfarad only because uh, next stage it will cancel. 1 microfarad and voltage is 60 volt, so Q is 60 micro coulomb. Okay. Now, the say, uh, for this capacitor, we are trying to find the potential across this capacitor, right? That is the question. So, suppose the potential difference across this is V. Now, what we can write is that that same Q is equal to C1, I am saying this is equals to C1, C1 V. Okay. So, 60 equals to C1 is uh, 6 and V we are trying to find. So, V equals to 60 divided by 6 that is 10 volt. So, V equals to 10 volt. So, correct answer is 10 volt. Okay. I hope you answered this question correctly. This is a very common type of CT level question. Okay. Neither too hard nor too easy. Okay. Question number 23. Energy stored per unit volume in an electric field of strength E volt per meter in a medium of dielectric constant K in joule per meter cube is. So, the energy stored per unit volume of a capacitor is given by uh, U equals to half epsilon naught E square when there is only air is present. Now, if you add cap, uh, uh, medium of dielectric constant K in between, then definitely this will become half k epsilon naught e square. Okay, obviously, it will increase by k because epsilon naught and k are related to each other. So, normal case it is uh, without k and for uh, k is present it will be k epsilon naught e square. So, half k epsilon naught e square is the correct answer. Right? Now, next question. The work done in, a, uh, in placing a charge of 8 times 10 to the power of minus 8 coulomb on a condenser of capacity 100 microfarad is. So, they have asked you to what is the work done. <laughs> Simple question. Okay. So, what we know is that uh, to uh, do the work, what we have to calculate is the how much, uh, first of all we have to calculate the potential. So, what formula we will use is that the work done is basically the energy stored in the capacitor. We do not need to calculate this. So, energy stored in the capacitor is half C V square or half C square V square by C. C V is equals to Q. So, we can write this as half Q square by C. So, one line formula. Okay? No need to worry. So, U equals to half uh, Q square. Q square is uh, 8 times 10 to the power of minus 8 whole square divided by C. C is given 100 microfarad. 100 microfarad means 100 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Okay, or a half 64 times 10 to the power of minus 16 divided by 100 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Okay, so, this will be 32 okay, or 32 times 10 to the power of minus 6, 10 to the power of minus 16. So, 10 to the power of minus 10. There was a division of 100. Division of 100 means it will go up and it will become 10 to the power of minus 2. So, minus 10, minus 2. That will be minus 12. Okay? So, 32 times 10 to the power of minus 2 joules. Okay? So, this is the problem for question number 24. Question number 25. What is the electric potential at a distance of 9 centimeter from 3 nano coulomb charge? So, electric potential is given by K Q by R. This is the formula. So, K is we know that 9 times 10 to the power of 9. Okay. Q is given 3 nano coulomb. 3 nano coulomb means 3 times 10 to the power of minus 9. Okay. 
and distance is given 9 centimeter. 9 centimeter means 9 times 10 to the power of minus 2 meters. Okay? So, this 9, this 9 cancels, this 10 to the power of 9, 10 to the power of minus 9 cancels and this 10 to the power of minus 2 will go up and it will become uh, 3 times 10 to the power of 2 that is 100. So, it will be 300. So, 300 volt is the answer. Okay? Easy question. Now, let us move on to the next question. Work done in carrying an electron from point A to point B in an electric field is 3.2 times 10 to the power of minus 18 joules. The potential difference is. So, it is a very interesting question. Okay? So, work done and the potential difference are related by this formula. Okay? So, if you multiply uh, the work done with the charge, you will get the uh, potential difference, sorry. <coughs> work done is given by Q d Q V, right. So, force, if you remember force was given by Q into E, work done is given by Q d V, right. So, work done is given here, work done is given 3.2 times 10 to the power of minus 18 joules. So, 3.2 times 10 to the power of minus 18 joules joules. Okay? Now, what is the charge? Charge is basically one electron, an electron. So, charge is 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 and you are trying to find the potential difference dV. So, dV will be equals to 3.2 times 10 to the power of minus 18 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. So, it will be 2 and they will cancel, it will, you will get a plus 10. So, it will be, you will be 20 volt, 20 volt is the answer, okay. Easy question, I hope you enjoyed, we are almost at the end phase, only 3 questions remain. A system of 2 charges separated by a certain distance, up, uh, distance apart stores electrical potential energy. If the distance between them is increased, the potential energy of the system will be decreasing, okay. The potential energy Oh, uh, two charges, okay, Q1 and Q2, they are storing some potential energy. What is the stored potential energy? K, Q1, Q2 by R, right? This is the stored potential energy of the charges. Now, if you increase the distance, okay, the uh, potential energy will decrease, okay? So, it will decrease in any case, okay? No matter uh, if the distance between them is increased, they will always uh, decrease, right? Because the magnitude will decrease. Now, the work done to move a charge on an equipotential surface. So, in an equipotential surface, the potential difference is 0. So, dV equals to 0. So, work done, what is work done? Work done is Q dV. So, dV is 0. So, work done will be 0. So, that is the answer. Question number 28, answer 0. Question number 29. A voltmeter reads 4 volts when connected to a parallel plate capacitor with air as dielectric, right? So, voltmeter reads 4 volt when connected to a parallel plate capacitor and it reads uh, 4 volts, right? So, initially with air it was 4 volts. Now, uh, when a dielectric slab is introduced between the plates for the same configuration. So, you have introduced a dielectric slab here, okay, for the same configuration, okay, the voltmeter reads 2 volt. Now, the voltmeter reads 2 volt, okay. What is the dielectric constant of the material? What is the dielectric constant of the material that you have to find? Now, you know that capacitance is given by uh, epsilon naught A by D, normally with air field capacitor. And without air, if you want to calculate the capacitor, then it will be K epsilon naught A by D, parallel plate capacitor or you can say this is nothing but K times C. So, if you insert a dielectric in between par uh, parallel plate capacitor, its uh, capacitance increases by the multiplier of dielectric constant, right. So, initially uh, the charge stored in the capacitor that will remain constant in both cases. Why? Charge is conservative 
right and there is no leakage is happening so total charge will remain constant so q is equal to c v1 that is the first case equals to c1 v2 that is the second case right so both cases the charge will be remaining same right so what is c uh, c is uh, we we are assume this is c okay this is c we assumed c times v1 v1 is 4 so this is v1 this is v2 this is 4 equals to c1 what is c1 c1 is k times c k times c times v2 v2 is 2 volt okay so this will cancel we will get 2 okay so c c cancels so k must be equals to 2 so the dielectric constant of the slab must be 2 right now question number 30 a spherical shell of radius 10 centimeter is carrying a charge q if the electric potential at, at distance is 5 centimeter 10 centimeter and 15 centimeter from the center of the spherical shell is v1 v2 and v3 respectively then so the radius of the shell is 10 centimeter it carries some charge uh, q okay the electric potential now electric potential inside a spherical shell is constant so now they have given you distances 5 centimeter 5 centimeter will be somewhere here okay this will be 5 centimeter next is 10 centimeter 10 centimeter will be on the surface okay and then there is a point 15 centimeters so 15 centimeter may be somewhere distant here now we know that v is constant in inside the spherical shell so this point and this point should be at equal potential this is an equipotential right so they will be at equal potential so v1 must be equals to v2 but both of them should be greater than v3 because as you are going away from the object the potential decreases right so v1 must be equals to v2 and both of them should be greater than that of v3 so correct answer is option number d so we have reached today's this end of today's discussion i hope you enjoyed this kpl paper i enjoyed thoroughly while framing the question paper and while solving it along with you so i will be back with a new lecture tomorrow till then bye